Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today we're looking at another episode of The Haunting Hour, a show conceptualized by R.L. Stein of Goosebumps fame. If you're not familiar with this series, it was meant to be for a younger audience, the warning claiming Kids 7 and Up could watch it, but it turned out to be astoundingly dark, even for adults. I was shocked at some of the themes presented in this show and its willingness to show death and body horror. That being said, not every episode had a morbid plot. Some of them borderlined on cheesy and more resembled a Goosebumps episode where the acting was weird and the writing was hammy. Because the first several episodes I watched were definitely on the bleaker side, I was a little shocked when the haunting hour went a more tame route, and I think this is the case with Game Over from Season 2. My curiosity to watch it was really spurred by the vague description on my streaming service. An expert gamer plays a new game with a twist on level 3. I've been known to be knowledgeable about gaming, so let's dive in. The episode greets us with our main characters, Kelly, who bears a striking resemblance to Ron Weasley, and goes by the username Kelraiser and his best friend Gooch. I kept mishearing his name as Dooch and started making jokes about it sounding like douche and now I feel bad in retrospect. <sighs> I'm such a Gooch bag. They're playing something that looks similar to an id game, like a modern Doom, and clearly using Mad Cat's Xbox controllers. Well clearly they aren't real gamers. <laughs> what in the world is this painting? It's a kid gaming on his couch, sitting in front of an open window and there's like a bunch of sticks outside? Kelraiser finishes off the zombie and congrats congratulates himself on a job well done. And that is why they call me Kel Razor. He gets irritated because Gooch is not as skilled as he is at the game and asks him to get him a soda. I'm gonna find someone to play at my own level. While he's gone, Kel Razor sees a message pop up on the screen, presumably from another person playing the game named Major Mayhem. You are good. Ready for a real challenge? Ugh, it reminds me of getting texts from my older family members. Hi Sarah, are you there? Plus fix my computer. Aren't you? Squirrel emoji and Hilda. Kel Razor accepts the challenge and the user replies with an address telling him to go to it alone. Sure thing, meeting a stranger from the internet, that sounds safe. Not using his better judgment, Kel Razor decides to go to this random address and brings Gooch along with him. Wait, so some cyber freak I am you tells you to meet him downtown and you're gonna do it? Yeah, I'm with Gooch, but Kel Razor's ego has taken over and he wants to throw down even if this rando turns out to be a serial killer. But first... Gotta hydrate. At the bowling alley? I was actually pleasantly surprised at how fast this episode progressed. Within the first few minutes, Kel Razor and Gooch arrive at their destination, which they refer to as Shady. Does this look shady to you? I'd live there. It looks like my house in Animal Crossing. Kel Razor heads in alone and finds what looks to be an ominous esports chamber. Three monitors flip on and he's greeted by Major Mayhem. Don't touch anything. Sit down, Kel Razor. How do you know that name? What do you mean, how does he know? He messaged you earlier. It's your username, the one you bragged about earlier. And that is why they call me Kel Razor. After some more bragging, Major Mayhem, who is also the game master, presents him with a new top secret game called Z-Town. Sounds thrilling. Major Mayhem tells him to not share it with anyone, because <laughs> yeah, gamers are so good at not leaking secrets. You're not gonna believe this. See? They boot it up immediately and, oh good, it's an FMV game. Ugh, first person games make me anxious. I was afraid of mist when I was young and nothing even happens in that game. In game, the two enter Z town, or if you're German like me, Z town. When they enter, their house is transplanted into the game's environment, which is full of zombies. <coughs> oh wow, that scream, that was amazing. <coughs> Oh, it really is an FMV game. Real life zombies and trying whatever the fuck you can to solve the puzzles, even if it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you use that fly swatter. <laughs> Hellraiser and Gooch try to escape from the zombie, amputating its arm in the process. You're just gonna leave that there? Wow. Littering. They realize they're in the game after noticing an absence of people, which is strange because I thought the zombie would have been the giveaway. The tone really takes on the movie Shaun of the Dead, with silly sound effects and similar character dynamics. They meet two other players, a girl named Micah and a boy who is aptly named Shaun. There's even a scene similar to the pub fight from Shaun of the Dead, except this takes place in a bowling alley. Gotta hydrate. Before the fight starts, Gooch grabs a hot dog and puts ketchup on it, ultimately sealing his death because of this completely blasphemous act. What was that? The sound of someone ruining a hot dog. I think we're in the game. Wow, you're a genius. The zombies infiltrate the place, and because Kel Razor was too busy showing off, he failed to help his team and Micah gets captured. Her health bar lowers and her player is eliminated. Sean gets captured and Gooch and Kel Razor do basically nothing to save him. <laughs> 
At this point, I also started to feel like the plot resembled The Most Dangerous Game, a short story written by Richard Connell. You probably know of it, and if not directly, then by the amount of stories it has influenced. It tells of a big game hunter becoming stranded on an island who is then hunted by an aristocrat. Yeah, slightly different here, I realize, as the game master isn't doing the hunting, he's just putting the players in a dangerous environment, but I was getting some similar vibes. Major Mayhem tells them that there is no way out of the game. They have to beat it for any chance of escape. At least one person needs to remain standing. Gooch decides to just go all in and sacrifices himself as a distraction so Kellraiser can make it to the end. I respect that. Gooch knows what his strengths are and it's not fighting, so he forfeits his life so that they stand a chance at winning. Kellraiser makes it to the final level where he meets Major Mayhem, the game master. He finally realizes that being the best isn't all it's cracked up to be, checks his ego, and chooses his friends as his weapons. They get their lives back and manage to subdue Mayhem. Unfortunately, winning doesn't mean Kellraiser gets to go home. The reason Mayhem was looking for the best was so he could pass his title along to them, and Kellraiser proved himself to be just that. And that is why they call me Kellraiser. It's not clear what happens to the other players. Presumably they get to go home, but Kellraiser is left behind, tasked with the job of finding the next victim to take his place. He gets started right away targeting a bratty little kid who also thinks a little too highly of himself. He touches the screen and... I loved the ending for this one. In fact, I thought seeing the kid get abruptly yanked through the television screen was one of the scariest, more startling parts of the episode, otherwise I thought it lacked frightening moments. Not every episode from The Haunting Hour has a moral, some are just bleak or disturbing, which makes sense. Horror can make for good cautionary tales, and sometimes they can just make for fun frights. And this one tried for the moral. Hellraiser neglected his friends, couldn't be a team player, and only cared about himself, and that landed him in a dismal situation. I get a lot of satisfaction seeing entitled gamers get their comeuppance, and I understand using gaming as a more modern topic, but it really did just feel like Shaun of the Dead Light, with some gratuitous violence against zombies and a few humorous moments. I suck at video games. Ow. Compared to a lot of cautionary tales within horror, I'd say this one falls on the weaker side. It almost has that Twilight Zone feel to it, where your actions lead you to a life of eternal suffering, as opposed to just dying. But I think because it was so hokey, the ending just didn't land. I also don't think Hellraiser truly learned his lesson, typically lessons are learned over years. And I think in the end, winning was still the goal for him, whether that meant using his friends or not. Even if he had learned his lesson, the episode very quickly jumps away from the moral by making making it not matter. He still has to be the game master, and he still has to carry on with the tradition of finding the best players to take his place. So there's not enough of a direct message to make the moral stand out as the main theme, and there's not enough significantly scary scenes for it to be taken seriously as a horror story either. It feels like the writers just wanted to have fun with the we're trapped inside a video game premise, as opposed to making something more memorable or impactful. Although I can tell the creators had a great time with the zombies and the fight scenes, those are pretty fun. The actors obviously had a fun time too, especially this one who does a little twirl after getting bonked on the head with a frying pan. If that zombie lives, he definitely has a potential career in dance. The gaming element gave it more of an action-adventure feel, and that's not my favorite way to digest horror. It makes sense for the audience, which is going to consist of preteens and teens, but I'm more inclined towards the macabre. The story was also very fast-paced, which I consider a pro for things that are more action-oriented. Sometimes you just need to get straight to the point, and this story does that. Another thing the series really has going for it that separates it from older children's horror shows is the acting. The actors are more varied in age compared to series like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark, so that gives it a lot more maturity and relatability. Still, I prefer the episodes that feature pumpkin heads and death. Not people dying, necessarily, just death as a character. That's my jam. If you have an episode of The Haunting Hour you are just dying to see me talk about, please leave a suggestion in the comments. Perhaps you have a more grisly one in mind. Until then, stay spooky. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video on Game Over from R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more children's horror reviews, I have some, but first I'd like to thank my patrons for continuing to support my channel. It means so much to me to have your support so I can keep putting out quality content. If you don't want to give me money, which is completely understandable because sometimes I blow it on Denny's breakfast, no worries. Likes, comments, and especially sharing helps to spread my work.
If you want to browse my content before subscribing, please do so. Here's a few videos you can start with. On the left, I have a breakdown of a more disturbing episode of The Haunting Hour, and on the right, I have an episode from one of my flagship series, That Time on Murder, She Wrote. Murder, mystery, and horror go hand in hand, you know. Thank you again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.